Hey there everyone, it's a really exciting time at the movies at the moment, especially if you like your British scientists, because there's a bunch of films out at the moment that are showcasing some of the big stars of British science. We've got Stephen Hawking, we've got Alan Turing, we've got someone you might not have heard of, Mary Somerville. Now I quite like collecting autographs, and if you want to get the autographs of those three people, well that's going to be a pretty big challenge, but don't worry, we've got you covered. We have all three signatures here at the Royal Society, and Keith, head librarian here, is going to show them to us. We're going to start with Mary Somerville, and I think some people might not have heard of her. She's featured in this new film about Turner, but do you want to tell us who Mary Somerville is? Well, Mary Somerville was a mathematician, a very good one. She uh, is probably best known because she has Somerville College named after her, but she uh, also worked a little bit on uh, the Sun. And here we have some letters of Mary Somerville's to uh, Sir John Herschel, the, the leading astronomer, of course. Very famous astronomer, so. I love all these famous people writing letters to each other and I get to look at them. I feel like a bit of a pretender here reading these letters. But no, no, it, it, it is very good stuff. Now, of course, um, the reason Mary Somerville's in the Turner movie is because Turner was tremendously interested in light. So uh, here we have uh, Mary Somerville, who is uh, being played in the Mr. Turner movie. Okay, so there's her signature there, and not just her signature, her signature at the end of a letter to John Herschel. Indeed, yes. So, Pretty so impressive. It's, it's, you, ha you have a two-hitter here, so this is Mary Somerville on the, the address leaf of this one, uh, signed by Herschel. So, John Herschel writing to Mrs. Somerville, and then Mrs. Somerville writing back to Herschel. Absolutely. And the signature. But, if you think that's good, this next one is going to knock your socks off. Now I'm not going to talk too much about this because we've just recently made a video on one of my other channels with Keith and Professor Polyakov. But just to summarise, this is the charter book at the Royal Society and everyone who becomes a fellow of the Royal Society signs this book. So in my opinion, this is the world's greatest autograph book. It's pretty fantastic. And, and, I, and I know you guard this with your life, so we will be very careful with it. Let's look inside because both Alan Turing and Stephen Hawking are fellows of the Royal Society, yeah. so they signed this book. That means their autographs are in this book, along with Isaac Newton and Boyle and anyone else who's anyone. Anybody you can think of, pretty much, yeah. is in this volume. Okay, so Keith's going to open it up and we're going to track down these autographs. We're going through time here, mm -hmm. through the annals of science. Rutherford, <laughs> just yeah. Ernest Rutherford just skipping past, yeah, I forget about it. It is a bit of a time machine. It's yeah. Uh, so here uh, in the 1950s, we have Alan Turing. Page 108 in the second column, fourth from the bottom, mm -hmm. A.M. Turing. That's an M, is it? It is, yeah. What was his middle name? I don't even know. Uh, I can't remember either. Something Keith doesn't I know. know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I've ever asked you a question. It'll, you come, didn't it'll yeah. come back to me. Right. <laughs> anyway, there we go. There's his signature before, he, um, before we lost him too early, of course. So there's Turing, but I'm sure one people are going to be really curious about is Stephen Hawking, because of mm. course Stephen Hawking can no longer sign his yep. signature because he has motor neuron disease, Absolutely. he can't use his arms in that way. So in what year did he sign the book? Well, so he said, Alan Turing is in the 50s, uh, Stephen Hawking is in the 1970s. So uh, at the stage when he signed, he, he still was able to, to, to sign the charter book, which is fantastic for the Royal Society because he is such a big name. Here we go, through time again, jumping forward only 20 years this time. Okay, we're on page 121 of the book now. Again, second column, fifth from the bottom, Stephen Hawking. There you go, a star among stars there. It is amazing, like you see these names littered all over. You see, you know, Roger Penrose here and people like that. You've got all these, all these names who are all incredible, incredible people in their own right. One question that I think has to be asked though is Mary Somerville, inc incredibly accomplished woman, mm -hmm. did amazing things. She is not in the charter book. No, she isn't. The uh, society did not elect women until 1945. So uh, there, there wasn't uh, conceived of as, as a profession for women scientists in the 19th century. Does it fill you with any sadness to think of all these great women who were making strides before the sort of the 1940s who didn't get to have their name in this book. I mean, how great would it be if they were in there? It, it would be fantastic. We, we quite often have, uh, like Mary Somerville, a signature in, in other places, but you really want one whole 
document trying to capture all of these people. Um, there are one or two who didn't make it though, not just the women, and we might talk about Albert Einstein one of these days. Yes, Albert Einstein's not in this book either. We'll save that for another day. <laughs> It's really nice to see this model, but you did bring one thing along today, yes. which excites me even more. Could we have a look at that? Yes. Yeah. Can, can I pick it up? Yes. You trust me? Yes. <laughs> All right. Yes. I'll show you, so, I'll show pe everyone the back first. That's the back of it. But if I turn this around now, look at this. 